Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dearest Savior's
fondest memories of uh, Christmas is gathering the kids up on Christmas morning prior to opening their gifts and telling them that we're going to read the story uh, of Christ. Um, it wasn't always on Christmas morning. Sometimes it would be Christmas Eve. But we'd read the story and uh, it was, um, you know, funny how it things evolved. They got to where um, they could sit and actually listen and ask questions. Because in the beginning, it was like, well, when are we going to be finished so we can open our gifts? It was about opening the gifts. And um, over the years, I got a chance to explain, it's not just about opening gifts, you know? It's about the Savior and then what the Savior brought. He gave us life and, you know, so many other things and trying to stress the importance of that. And um, finally, you know, we got to where instead of asking, well, how long is it going to be or how long is it going to take, they would go and get my Bible for me. Um, they would ask questions uh, about the Savior and um, why he had come into the world and all. And so it, it got to be a joy. So, you know, you have to be patient with them in the beginning because, you know, being kids, they're going to want to know, when can I open my gifts? But they learned that we were going to do that. And so it became a tradition and they just automatically get up and, and get what I needed and listen and ask questions and, um, you know, talk about Christ and what, what he meant and, you know, what his life brought to us, what a gift it was, that he himself was truly the gift of all. And um, another um, memory I have as a child is um, I used to go to uh, Dale High, and I called it the country, um, where my aunt lived. And um, when they got up on Christmas morning, they were so happy, and their gifts were they had gotten a pair of pajamas, and they had a hard candy peppermint, a giant candy peppermint stick. And if you could have seen the joy, and of course, I'm floored because I'm thinking, is that it? And they're this happy about it. it. It taught me something to learn to be grateful and thankful for the things that, um, you know, I had received uh, because at that point, I wasn't as grateful as I needed to be. Um, and seeing them happy over the small things, it, 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 it showed me something and made me realize that I was blessed and that um, I should be thankful. So it made me more thankful. And uh, I'm just thankful in this season for the Savior that came, amen, to give me life and that more abundantly. And I just praise him, amen, for being here, you know, through the season and through even through through other seasons, uh, you go through things, but it's a joy to have a savior to go through with you, to take you through, you know? And um, I'm just grateful for that. I'm grateful for family and friends, uh, loved ones. I'm just thankful and uh, blessed. Merry Christmas to you, amen. Reflect upon your blessings through this holiday season and beyond. God bless you. Oh, come all ye
Hello, from the home of James and Ann Hubbard, we would just like to say that we are thankful to God for everything that he has done for us. We are thankful for our life, our health, and our strength. We are thankful for our family and our friends. And we are especially thankful to you, the Powerhouse Church of God in Christ family, for you are one of a kind. We, the Hubbards, would like to say to you, Happy Holidays, and may God continuously to bless you more and more and more. Bye.
Hey everyone, I hope everyone is staying safe and well during this holiday season. I miss you all very much. Um, Christmas to me and my family really represents togetherness and good food. Um, on Christmas Eve, all the kids and the grandkids, we all come into town and we head over to my grandparents' house and including my grandparents, there's 11 of us in total and we'll have a big pajama party. Um, we'll play games, uh, we'll eat some good food. Normally my grandmother will cook some etouffee or some gumbo or some chili since it's colder outside and we just enjoy each other's presence and around midnight or so a little bit before my papa will begin to sing joy to the world and we'll all join in and singing with him and he'll pray us into christmas day and we're just thanking jesus for who he is and all that he's done and then we'll open up our christmas gifts but i hope everyone has a very merry christmas and a happy new year much love to all and i hope to see you all soon when i think of my fondest memories of christmas i think about growing up as a kid going to what we call the down home, um, which is the country for us where my parents grew up um, in Sicily Island, Clayton, Files, Louisiana, Greenville, all that area. And every year we would drive down and on Christmas Eve, my aunts and my uncles, my uncle Bume, who played the organ or piano, he was the pianist. Uh, we would all get together around the piano in the dining area and come up with songs for the next day because every year we'd had Christmas morning service and Christmas night service. If you were in the Oliver household, you were going to Christmas morning service or Christmas night service. And some of us did both. That's how we started off our Christmas day. And my aunt would come up with a song and we would all come together and blend in and sing as a family, like people looked forward to the Oliver family showing up and I miss that, especially with um, them having gone on, them not being here anymore. Christmas hasn't been the same, but I thank God for those memories. I thank God for how we grew up and just the institution of family and just really um, that thing that was instilled into us to really, really appreciate family and the time spent together and the memories and the laughters and the stories that were told from my my dad and my aunts were younger and then my my Medea, my mom's mom would always cook so much food and have cakes galore and people would stop by because they wanted some of Florisa's cakes and it's just an amazing amazing thing to have those memories to have memories of grandparents and great grandparents and I had a great, great grand that I grew up knowing. So I thank God for uh, the memories I have. And those are things I think about when I think about Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys.
Okay, so my favorite or my fondest Christmas memory, I can remember being a little girl with my mom um, and we had this tradition where we would decorate the Christmas tree together and we'd always have Alvin and the Chipmunks uh, Christmas music playing and uh, we would have our hot chocolate with marshmallows and we put a candy cane inside. Um, we just spent a lot of time together just having fun and really embracing the spirit of Christmas. Uh, my dad would be around there somewhere decorating um, largely the outside of the house and me and my mom would be more so responsible for the inside but I just remember um, my mom teaching me about tradition and you know things that families do during Christmas time and so um, I'm grateful for that memory. I think back on it and I just smile. Um, my mom taught me really the importance of family and I thank her for that and um, I'm especially thankful this year uh, for Jesus when you think about him being the savior of the world the songs we sing him being the savior of the world and Emmanuel um, I think we could especially hold tight to those things this year here in 2020 uh, I'm grateful that he has been everything you know that I've had need of this year and he's been everything that so many people uh, have need of and so um, I'm just grateful for Jesus and uh, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. <laughs> Hello, we want to just give you our, our, our insight in terms of Christmas. I want to give you our, our fondest memories or maybe just uh, what we enjoy about Christmas. So we'll start with you. What about your fondest memories? Okay, my fondest memories are probably um, of a bicycle that I received. I received it for both my birthday and Christmas. 
And it didn't matter. It didn't matter that uh, my birthday was in November. <laughs> it really didn't matter. I've had that bicycle, and that's all I needed. That was my mode of transportation. Oh, cool. <laughs> I think that may be something I may try to get you something for your Christmas. <laughs> it's a, it's a birthday and Christmas. Yes, another bike. <laughs> another bike. Hey, I think I can find one around here. Uh, you know, what I really enjoy about Christmas is just having all of my kids around mm -hmm. and my grandkids. I really just enjoy the the, the fellowship, the family, the friends, uh, and also I enjoy the uh, the meals, it, it, having a good meal and being able to eat, you know, four or five times, a, you know, the day of Christmas. I, I enjoy that a lot. And probably what I enjoy uh, least physically about Christmas is knowing that that fast is coming up in January. So it's always a bittersweet thing to think about Christmas. But for the me in the meantime, we're just going to eat, rejoice, be merry, and, and enjoy the family. Yes, and, and I feel a little bit guilty because I didn't raise my kids up reading the Christmas story every Christmas morning. feel a little, a little bit guilty about that, so Shane, come here. Shane. Well, you know what? <laughs> the thing that you did, uh, that you did, uh, that they were raised watching was the movie, A Christmas Story yes. itself. So <laughs> yes, we were. get to watch that. Typically, we get to watch that several times on Thanksgiving and several times on Christmas. So uh, if you didn't read Christmas stories to your kids, if you didn't, you know, if you didn't do all of that fancy stuff, check out A Christmas Story. It's an old movie, but it's still a good movie. Christmas Story, Home Alone. Yeah, that teaches them some Both of them, some right? some bad practices. <laughs> oh my gosh! But seriously, they're probably, they're probably seriously, horrified. Seriously, we we pray that you have a great Christmas yes, holiday. Yes. We pray that you be safe and that you enjoy your family. We do want you to be cautious with COVID nineteen, but we pray that you have a great time and enjoy your friends, enjoy your families as much as you can in this holiday season. God bless you.